Hello, my name is David Kelsey, and I am proud and honored to be the 2021 president of the Association of Book Reveal and Outreach Services. Joining me today is Crystal Harris, an AVOS board member and our AVOS membership committee chair. Crystal and I are here today to co-host our second installment of Membership Mondays, where we showcase the many faces of our AVOS family members. The Membership Monday series is part of the 2021 AVOS All Aboard Membership Campaign. With us today is Rick Medrano, Outreach Librarian and Transitional and Reentry re Population Specialist at the High Plains Library District in Colorado. Rick was also one of our 2020 AVOS Rising Stars Award winners. Welcome, Rick. Crystal and I are so glad that she could be here with us today for our Membership Monday series. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So, Rick, how long have you been a member of ABOS? I think my first, I joined when I first started in outreach. So that would have been the end of 2018 and um, just kind of been going, going strong since. That's great. Well, we're glad you're part of our AVOS family's last couple of years. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to become a member of the organization? Um, so my manager at the time, uh, Rosa Granado, she is now one of the board members on AVOS as well. Um, she was, you know, we were talking back and forth is when I started, first started getting into the outreach land of library land and um, just, you know, mentioned that there's a community of people out there that are also doing this type of work and having the same kind of struggles with um, the difference in librarianship and, you know, the challenges that are posed with this type of work. And she suggested checking out the listserv. So I started there with the listserv and just kind of seeing what information came up. And um, shortly after you know, being on that listserv and learning so much, I was like, yeah, this is an organization I want to be a part of and try to contribute a little bit more and um, got a membership ready and going because I wanted to present at the conference the next year. So um, got everything set up and I guess the rest is history from there. <laughs> We're glad you found our listserv and you're part of our organization and uh, congratulations again on being one of our Rising Stars Award winners. We're wonderful to have you as part of our uh, family. Um, how have you been involved with the organization, Rick? So as I mentioned, the listserv is primarily how I started um, with ABOS and, you know, either reading or sending back some information from different requests, um, specifically mobile services when I had more information um, of a grounding in that area at, at the beginning. But uh, in 2019, I attended uh, my first ABO con ABOS conference, and that was in um, Omaha, I think is that mm -hmm. year. Yes, it was. And uh, I had a presentation that year, so I uh, was happy to do that and kept sticking around being part of the listserv and reaching out to people as necessary. After the conference that year, I joined uh, the BOIR subcommittee. Um, so I helped kind of with some of that rollout and helping, you know, structure and test that tool. And then since then, I've been um, advocating it to different organizations here in Colorado, um, across our organization directly. Um, and then in 2020, I was excited to get to the conference again, but um, with the pandemic and, uh, and everything, I was excited that you, you all went virtual and I was still able to present um, this last year too uh, at ABOS. And I thought just having that virtual connection with everybody in the midst of everything was really important and impactful. Great. And we're glad you've been able to come and have uh, uh, part of our organization, part of our conference organization as part of our conferences as well. So what is your favorite AVOS conference memory? Um, so I've only been to two and they've both been drastically different. Um, but I think the networking nights are just so interesting. They're just so, you know, there's a lot of fun activities you can do. When we were in Omaha, it was like, um, kind of all throughout the entire hotel area. You had to like go around and 
find little pictures of Warren Buffett's face and the more of those you could find the more points you got to I think it was win some sort of door prize or something and um, all of the activities along the side of the wall were like uh, Nebraska themed so I learned a lot about the wonders of Nebraska that I had no idea about. Um, so I just thought that was a really unique experience. Um, it was fun talking to a bunch of different people. That's how I got, you know, involved in understanding what the BOIR project was and um, considering how I could be a little bit more active in the organization. So, um, you know, it was fun, but it also helped me kind of get a path toward a, a little bit more uh, career advancement and that kind of stuff. It was really interesting. Wonderful. Um, so Rick, how has ABOS helped you grow in your career? Yeah, so um, I would say first and foremost, just having the community of like-minded um, professionals has been a godsend, you know, just being able to bounce ideas back and forth or when we are doing something in our organization at High Plains that, um, you know, resonates with different people across the country. Uh, it's nice to be able to share that information and help grow the field of outreach servicing. Um, a lot of times we're kind of stuck in the middle of this. Um, is it, you know, are we doing outreach the verb or are we outreach the noun? Mm -hmm. um, and what does that look like? How does people doing different outreach and what does that look like across different organizations? So being able to have that community where we can start to develop outreach as an actual subfield and, you know, get some of these best practices and uh, data metrics, I think is really important for something I'm, I'm really interested in is, you know, data and assessment. So um, I think first and foremost, that that's been a really awesome aspect. And then being able to present at a couple of these conferences has been really, you know, advantageous to getting some of my personal projects or the projects of my colleagues out to the ABOS community. Um, we have a, a very large department considering um, other outreach departments in the country, um, almost about 23 people in our department. So wow. um, the things that we're able to, to do, we would love to share and you know market how uh, valuable that's been to our community. So you know trying to get out and demonstrate that to others has been very positive as well. And then finally, the ABOS Rising Star Award was just so cool to be able to showcase, you know, um, not only that the work I'm doing is relevant to my community, but it's, you know, recognized by um, a larger organization and I can kind of help establish more of that work at a, on a larger scale. So that was really an uh, awesome experience. Great. Mm -hmm. Good answer. So a question I always like to ask is, do you have any tips for those just entering the field of bookmobile and outreach services? My, the first thing I would say is be flexible. Um, outreach servicing is a lot different than regular library type servicing. Um, it just day to day is going to be, even though you're doing the same exact thing, it's going to look a hundred percent different than it did the day before. Um, you know, especially when you're out in the community, uh, things tend to look a lot different than, you know, a day to day inside of your library building. Um, especially, you know, when you have mobile servicing, when you're in a giant vehicle, it's, there's, there's just so many factors and variables to pepper in. Um, it might seem daunting, but at the same time, it's just so exciting. You're never doing the same thing. It's never monotonous. You get to do a lot of cool and interesting things. And, I think because we work with underserved populations and people who have barriers to service, it's just very rewarding that we're able to help people uh, receive library service or find entertainment, whatever, um, in ways that you know they haven't been able to in the past. So I think being flexible and just remembering that the value of what we're doing, and you know, especially when things get hard, there's 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 purpose and there's rationale behind it. Um, and I think finally, um, I would say we need to advocate a lot for our populations. Sometimes people don't necessarily, um, admin or um, people in the community don't necessarily think that, oh, we're only reaching a few people at the stop. So what, what's the importance of keeping it? 
Um, but it's really important for those individuals that utilize that service. And uh, without us being there, they're never going to receive that service. So uh, I think outreach servicing is, is a, a gateway to not only helping people receive library services, but also to help, you know, widen that net and include that diversity, inclusion, and equity across the board. So um, it's multi-tiered in our field, um, but it's important to recognize that advocacy is, a, is, a, is another huge component and something that the sooner you're able to develop those skills, the better off you'll be. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, yeah. perfectly stated, yeah. perfectly stated. And lastly, Rick, why would you encourage others to join the ABOS organization and become a, an official member? Uh, the community is just so active and so engaging. Um, people are extremely nice. You know, there's some people here that have had 30 years experience all the way down to people who are just joining today and tomorrow, you know? So just that range of experience is so critical to, to learning and developing. Um, you know, you can learn about what people have been doing for the last 30 years that have been really effective or the last 20 years that's been really effective. Or when people come in brand new, they ask a question, you're like, wow, I've never thought about it like that. I've never looked at it with that beginner's mindset. So you can start to kind of piece together how it can work for your organization. Um, and, you know, not only are you learning from the community, but you probably in your organization and your own job have so many skills and abilities and neat different perspectives that you can offer and help others grow and I think you know we're in the business of knowledge transfer and growth and I think that community is just so essential um, and I, listening to um, Susan's membership uh, interview she was talking about the uh, development of ABOS as an organization and how it used to just be a conference. Now it's it's so much more than just a conference. It's a community, it's people talking, engaging in the listserv. When you're at conference, you're finding all these new contacts and uh, it's just a very nimble organization. And now your guys' social media channels have been very active with showing showcasing other pieces of library service and there's always something to be gained. Uh, I think one of the most important things about becoming a member is I always like to say family because that's what yeah. we are and that we're a family that supports, encourages, inspires, and mentors each other. And they have never found another library organization that is so inclusive and welcoming and inviting than Avos. So, uh, well, Rick, Crystal and I look at thank you for joining us today for our second installment of Membership Mondays. Thank you, Rick, for sharing us with your AVOS journey and why you encourage others to join the organization as an official AVOS member. On behalf of the Association of Book of Eel and Outreach Services, I would like to thank everyone who tuned in to our Membership Monday series. Have a fa fantastic day, and don't forget, all aboard. Thank you.